The Auric War Clans book has dropped for Age of Sigmar along with a lot of really cool new Cruel Boys models. And I imagine like like quite a few of you, I'm knee deep in painting an army for them. Now the Cruel Boys, they come from the swamps. And so to do a thematic swamp style base, I developed a bit of a process and I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to go through some of the steps that are optional as well. And you can sort of take it as far as you want to. And of course you can use these swamp style bases for any sort of force that they're appropriate for not just Cruel Boys. Now when it comes to the paints, obviously they're green and you can use any kind of brand or, or tone of green that you have. You know, you just want to kind of match the dark greens and the sort of mossy greens. But other than that, you don't have to use these exact ones. Now we start off with a base of Sterling Mud or similar brown texture paint. I actually mix Rhinox Hide in with mine or you could let it dry and just paint right over it with Rhinox or a dark brown. I'm doing it on a base where I don't have a miniature on it just so you can see what I'm doing but I usually apply it after I've actually painted the model. Just take your time, and if you do get some on the feet, you can usually wash it off with just a brush and some water. Now, while the mud is still wet, I take the end of a brush or, you know, a Q-tip, something like that, a cotton swab, and I make, like, little indentations here and there to be ponds or puddles basically. And I try to do them in interesting spots depending on where the miniature is positioned on the base and, and just creating ridges around each little dip, uh, depression. And you can even like glob some of your sterling mud around the edges just to really enhance that depression so that you can have a really cool little puddle. Now you have to leave the sterling mud to dry for a bit longer than usual if you've created these sort of deeper ridges and deeper spots around on the base. But once it's dry, we're gonna go in and do a heavy dry brush with a fairly dark green. And in this case, I'm using Caliban Green from Games Workshop. Once that's dry, I do another kind of lighter dry brush with something like Elysian Green from Games Workshop. I actually use P3 Bog Moss, which is obviously appropriately named and works really well, looks really good. Now you could stop here if you like. Um, now I imagine if you made the depression where the puddle goes or where the pond goes, you probably want to keep going. But you could also just put Sterling Mud on flat, do a Caliban Green, and then like a Elysian Green dry brush, and you've got a fairly nice swamp tone to begin with. So it just depends how far you want to take it. Now we'll add some interesting touches. I'm going to use Fresh Moss Green from Abtalong. It's a pigment. And you can use, I mean, you could use just a bright green paint as well if you don't have these pigments. And the idea is just to add some spots around the base of like brighter green just to give it some visual interest. The pigment can be very strong and you could end up with just big bright blotchy spots and so you want to what i do is i mix it and i i thin it with some water and i just sort of dab it around and sort of smear it around thinly and like kind of push it up against rocks and things like that depressed areas recessed areas and just try to give it a natural look and a little bit of that brighter green hey if you're finding this video helpful do me a favor and hit the like button if I get enough likes, it grows the channel and I can afford like a third of a bottle of contrast paint. Thanks. Now for the water areas, I, I paint the bottom of the puddle or pond. What am I going to call it here? A pond. I paint the bottom of the pond, this Elysian green, or, or even you could use the bog green if you just want to, or bog moss from P3. And I kind of, I thin that with water so that I'm not, again, going to have a very solid uh, bottom color. I'm going to sort of swish it around, thin it, and just do it in a bit of a patchwork sort of style, just to give it a bit of irregularity. Now what I'm going to use is AK Interactive Swamp Green Water Gel. This is a really cool product, and if I put it on a little too thick, which I'm going to do in this tutorial, you'll just get a sort of a very, fairly thick dark green, but it looks very swampy and very cool. And you can all obviously apply it thinner. And I kind of goop it on in this tutorial and don't do the best job of it. But you can use any sort of water effect. Here's a few that you could choose from. If you decide to use a clear one, though, you could mix in a little bit of brown ink, maybe a little green ink, something like that, just to give it a bit of murkiness because it's supposed to be swamp water and not like a nice rain puddle. Now, swamps are full of various kinds of plant life. And at a minimum, you should apply at least one kind of swamp tuft to the base. I'm using actually Arm Army Painter Swamp Tuft for this. But if you've accumulated a variety of types or you want to buy them, here's a few that I've been using. I kind of went overkill and bought a number of them because I was going to basically do this whole big Cruel Boys Army. Now one tip, don't use matte varnish after your bog water have, has dried or it'll give it a very matte finish and it won't look like water. It won't have that shine, which it should. And then just paint the rim black and that's it. Now for another cool base technique, you could check this video out where I do a beach sand kind of ocean water theme. It could be cool for that new Harrow Deep setting for Underworlds. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.